Hi, I'm Tom Stone with Thermal Care. Today we're going to be talking about our HFCG adiabatic fluid coolers. These units combine two traditional types of cooling, forced air and evaporative. That's why they're sometimes referred to as hybrid fluid coolers. The idea behind this is they take advantage of the benefits of each style of cooling while minimizing the detriments. How this system would operate is during colder temperatures and during winter months, these units can operate as a traditional dry fluid cooler. A dry fluid cooler operates very similar to the radiator in your car. It uses forced air to cool the fluid. Then, during the other parts of the year, when the temperatures are warmer, we will employ the adiabatic system. A dry fluid cooler uses the ambient air temperature to achieve your desired outlet fluid temperature, but there must be an approach between those two to allow the energy to actually be exchanged. So you're limited in how much cooling you can get during warm periods of the year. That's where the adiabatic system comes into play. Without getting into the physics of what's actually happening, the best way to describe it is that that ambient air is pre-cooled before it hits the fluid cooler. This allows you to achieve a desired outlet temperature that is below the ambient conditions. The adiabatic system uses pads that you can see here. These cover the full surface area of the heat exchanger of the fluid cooler and allow to utilize every bit of surface area for that energy exchange. When these are sprayed, they come, become completely soaked and that is where you get that evaporative effect that creates the adiabatic system which allows you to pre-cool that air. Another means of attempting to do this is spraying the water directly on the coil of the fluid cooler itself. But when water evaporates, it, only the water leaves. So any dissolved solids can be left behind and that can eventually build up on the coil itself and essentially acts as an insulator which would inhibit your heat transfer and be a detriment to the system. You also have the possibility of corrosion when you're spraying water directly on metal. And then finally, when these units are completely soaked with this pad, it's contained and it runs down into a trough that can then be managed, whether it goes to drain or even use, used for other requirements within your facility, say like a wash down. Um, when you spray on here, that can potentially run off of that coil onto the ground around it and pool, damaging the surface, even maybe your roof structure. And you could also potentially have bacterial growth that could be dangerous. The HFCG series also uses all variable speed fans. What's nice about that is a two-part system. First, and primarily, it's a very energy efficient means of controlling these fans, rather than cycling them on and off when you have more than one. I've seen instances where using a variable speed system versus a cycling system, you can get an additional 40% energy savings just by varying that speed. Another slightly less impactful, but a nice feature is that a fan is its most noisy when it's running at full speed. So when you have a variable speed control, you're always gonna be at the minimum noise required by your system to achieve its full cooling requirement. Two more interesting features using the variable speed fans is one, that it has an algorithm to allow it to reverse direction and instead of pulling air in and blowing up, it will actually blow out. And what this does is any buildup that you have here from leaves or cottonwood or dirt and dust, it will help to knock that off and extend the time between your maintenance required. The other feature is called a jogging feature of that motor. When the sensors in the fan motor sense an imbalance, it will rock that speed back and forth to hopefully dislodge any ice that could have built up on there and allow that fan to go back into normal operation where it's perfectly balanced. Most traditional cooling towers that use open loop evaporative cooling act as what we would say is almost a big air scrubber. So anything that's in the air around that is getting pulled in and it actually will end up in your process fluid. That then gets pumped out to your equipment that requires cooling. 
you also have constant evaporation, so you have a high dissolved solid concentration, which will result in corrosion and scale buildup in your piping and on your equipment. And then finally, you need chemical treatment to prevent any sort of biological growth. With a fluid cooler system like this, it's a closed system. So it's not exposed to the atmosphere, it's not exposed to that dirt and debris, you don't have the same biological growth concerns, and then you also have a pressurized system. And this is something that's unique because when you think about a cooling tower system, it's open to the atmosphere. So you have to have a way to drain it in the event of a power shutdown even, or just to have that now cool water return to your pumping system. So you have to elevate that to have gravity do the work to drain that system in because you can't actively pump it. With this system, it's pressurized. So I could actually install this up on the roof next to a cooling tower where it would pump up and come back down. But I could also do it at the same level as my tank and even below grade because the whole system is pressurized and actively pumped. The HFCGs also incorporate what's known as a V-coil design, which you may be able to somewhat see by the slanted piece on the front here, which is mirrored as a slant on the back. The primary benefit of this is it's a great space-saving design by doing this as a vertical V-coil instead of a flat coil system. Traditional cooling towers will continue to have a place in process cooling. They are an efficient and cost-effective means of achieving this, but there are drawbacks. Adiabatic fluid coolers are a great alternative. They have many benefits that year after year will pay back and make a strong case for consideration for an alternative system. Additionally, these technologies that are incorporated into these units are continually improving and increasing their competitiveness. Finally, a fluid cooler can be incorporated into a chiller system for what's known as a free cooling circuit. These take advantage of low ambient conditions which allow you to reduce or even completely turn off the chiller usage. That kind of savings generates a very short ROI. Thank you for joining us today and I hope you learned something. Um.